One of the problems with, with methane, it's, it's, a, it's a very potent greenhouse gas, as, as I said. Uh, natural gas is mostly methane. And coming out of the COP21 negotiations last year in Paris, you know, the nations have agreed to keep the planet well below two degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial baseline. In fact, the only way to do that is to reduce methane emissions. Uh, if we reduce carbon dioxide emissions, which we must do, the climate system has lags and the planet will continue to warm for 30 to 40 years. The only way to slow uh, global warming is to reduce methane emissions. And at the moment, the natural gas industry is the largest source of methane pollution in the world. So we really need to get off of this kick of, of natural gas. It's a absolutely uh, terrible path. Algunas, digamos, eh, Shell eh, de Holanda o de los Países Bajos, eh, Total de Francia, eh, Wintershall de Alemania eh, y de Estados Unidos, eh, Dow Chemical, Chevron y Ex. Hay dos tipos de subsidios que en general la industria petrolera tiene, más allá de los no convencionales. Por una parte, lo que se llama el barril criollo, que es un precio interno del barril de petróleo que en este momento, en función de la baja del barril de petróleo internacional, es el doble del valor, que eso es el, la diferencia, la garantiza el Estado eh, a partir de in, ingresos públicos para que sea precisamente rentable la extracción de, de hidrocarburos no convencionales. La otra forma es eh, que las empresas definen de qué forma pagan las regalías, que son los impuestos que se les pagan al Estado nacional y provincial, por estar extrayendo en el territorio de, del país el, el hidrocarburo. The people of the Sahara rely on huge water resources which are in the aquifers, and those water resources are not renewables actually. So if companies start fracking for those resources, there is a huge risk that the, those water resources would be contaminated, which make their livelihood endangered in a way, because they rely, they rely on that water for their agriculture, for their survival, in very, very hard you know, environments. This push for towards more extreme ways of energy is not going to benefit those, uh, the, the people in there, because as we've seen before, even with natural gas, and oil, those towns are not benefiting from those resources. The main beneficiaries of those resources are first the dictatorial and corrupt regimes in place, the multinationals and Western governments. So all, all those resources are extracted in a way to further the interests of a minority at the expense of a majority. We have the acknowledgement that it is a problem, and that's new. Four years ago, and politicians would laugh at you and would just ignore the problem. And nobody can ignore it in, at the moment in the Netherlands, which is for us one big win already. They did lower the gas production, but a long way not enough. For us, the biggest win at this moment is actually that we're uh, establishing a big community movement by all different people with all different motivations standing in one front and who are now preparing to the next five years uh, let the resistance grow and get into action and get the voices out. You know, one of the biggest reasons that we were able to stop the Keystone XL was because we had this unlikely alliance of farmers, ranchers, tribal nations, and environmentalists all working together and all working at the same table. A lot of times in these environmental fights, you have a bunch of climate groups that come in from kind of national or international and then try to, you know, win a local fight. This was the complete opposite. We had local folks on the ground working hand in hand with the national and international groups. And we also had funders also funding the local groups and the national and international groups. So there was this equalization of power. So the local folks weren't kind of drowned out by the kind of voices of national folks. So we really did work kind of as a family and we were in the trenches for over six years. And so we had to be a family, both in the highs and lows and the fights of, that families normally have. Um, and we went through it together and we eventually obviously won. Thank you.